Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please click the subscribe button and the bell button for notification. First of all, I want to thank you all for always coming back to my channel and watching more of my free math videos. In my previous video, we have discussed about principal roots and its nature. Now, if you haven't watched that video, you need to watch that first before we proceed to this video because that is a prerequisite for you to understand this video. Please click the suggested video above to watch it first. If you have watched this, now let's proceed to our next topic that is all about determining between what two consecutive integers the square root of a number lie. Remember, if the principal root is an irrational number, the easiest way you can do is to determine between what two integers the square root of a number lie. But before that, we have to know how to compare radicals and principal roots. There is only one golden rule. There is a positive correlation between the radicand and the principal root. This means that if the radicand increases, the principal root increases and vice versa. If the radicand decreases, the principal root also decreases. Let's have examples. The square root of 121 is greater than the square root of 100 because 11 is greater than 10. The square root of 4 is less than the square root of 9 because 2 is less than 3. Now to identify which radicand or which principal root is greater than or less than, you just have to concentrate on the numeric part. If it is greater, then it is greater than. If it is less, then it is less than. If you have remembered in my previous video, I told you that it would be better if you can memorize the square roots of up to 400 or 20 multiplied by 20. If you have memorized that, congratulations, you did a good job. If you did not, here we have a quick side note for you to see and for you to realize why it is very important to memorize these side notes. To determine between what two consecutive integers the square root of a number line, our first step is to think of two consecutive perfect square integers where the given radicand is in between of them. Consider them as x and y. For step 2, take the square root of x and y. And our third and last step, thus, the given is between the square root of x and the square root of y. Let's apply this for you to better understand. The square root of 77. Where does the square root of 77 lie? It must be between two consecutive integers. First step is to think of two consecutive perfect square integers where the given radicand is in between of them. Consider them as x and y. Now, look at our side note on the right side and we can find 77 or the square root of 77 is somewhere between the square root of 64 and the square root of 81. For second step, we take the square root of 64 and the square root of 81. That is 8 and 9. Because the square root of 64 is 8 and the square root of 81 is 9. The last step, thus, the square root of 77 is between 8 and 9. Another example is the square root of 87. Our first step is to think of two consecutive perfect square integers where the square root of 87 is in between of them. And looking at our side notes, the square root of 87 is between the square root of 81 and the square root of 100. For the second step, we take the square root of 81 and 100, which is 9 and 10. The square root of 81 is equal to 9, and the square root of 100 is equal to 10. For the last step, the square root of 87 is between 9 and 10. Let's have another example, the square root of 50. First, we find two consecutive perfect square integers where the square root of 50 is in between them. And we can see the square root of 49 and the square root of 64. 
and we take the square root of x and y that is 7 and 8 the square root of 49 is equal to 7 and the square root of 64 is equal to 8 which gives us the square root of 50 is between 7 and 8 another example is 136 now we'll look at our side note, where is it located? And it is located between the square root of 121 and the square root of 144. Next, we take the square root of 121, which is equal to 11, and the square root of 144, which is equal to 12. Therefore, the square root of 136 is between 11 and 12. Let's have another example. The square root of 243. The square root of 243 is located between the square root of 225 and the square root of 256. Taking their square roots, we have 15 and 16. And giving us our final answer, it is between 15 and 16. Please click the subscribe button and bell button for notifications. Thank you. Our next example is the square root of 6. I have already removed the steps because I assume that you have already memorized it. Let's find where it is located and it is between the square root of 4 and the square root of 9. Now taking its principal roots, that is 2 and 3. Now we have the square root of 6 is between 2 and 3. Next example is the square root of 160. It is located between the square root of 144 and the square root of 169. Taking its principal roots, it is 12 and 13. Now the square root of 160 is between 12 and 13. Next, we have the square root of 94. The square root of 94 is located between the square root of 81 and the square root of 100. Taking its principal roots, therefore, the square root of 94 is between 9 and 10. Another example is the square root of 118. The square root of 118 is located between the square root of 100 and the square root of 121. And taking its principal roots, 10 and 11, we can now conclude that the square root of 118 is between 10 and 11. Our last example is the square root of 159. Looking at our side note, we can clearly see that it is between the square root of 144 and the square root of 165. Taking its principal roots 12 and 13, our conclusion, the square root of 159 is between 12 and 13. To refresh what we have talked about earlier, the positive correlation between the radicand and the principal root. It means that we should just focus on the numbers that we can find and compare it, whether it is greater than or less than. Now let's use our prior knowledge in comparing radicals. Have an example, the square root of 19. Now let us think of a radical that is one step smaller than the square root of 19. As I have said earlier, you should just focus on the number that you can find, and that is 19. One step less than 19 because we are looking for a number or a radical that is less than the square root of 19. It is 18. Therefore, the square root of 18 is less than the square root of 19. Next, we think of a radical that is greater than the square root of 19, but just by one step. If we think of a number that is one step or one unit greater than 19, we can consider the number 20. Therefore, it is one unit greater than the square root of 19, and it is greater than 19. The square root of 20 is greater than 19. Next, we have the square root of 34. What is the radical less than the square root of 34 and greater than the square root of 34? By just looking at the number, we can find that the square root of 33 is less than the square root of 34 and the square root of 34 is less than the square root of 35. Another example is the square root of 76. One unit or one step less than the square root of 76 
is equal to the square root of 75. And one step more than the square root of 76 is the square root of 77. Another example is the square root of 115. If you have seen the patterns in our previous example, you can now answer that 114 or the square root of 114 is less than the square root of 115 and the square root of 115 is less than the square root of 116. Our last example is the square root of 217. Now we just think of a radicand that is 1 less than 217 and 1 more than 217. And that is the square root of 216 and the square root of 218. And that ends our lesson today about determining which two consecutive integers the square root of a number lie. And that is just like estimating which part because it's hard to compute for the decimal part of the square root of irrational numbers. And the same with comparing of radicals. I hope that you have understand this lesson fully and clearly. If you have any questions or suggestions, you can comment it below. Stay tuned because I will be uploading more of my free math tutorials and thank you for watching.